Chapter 2. The Deluge. After man's shameful fall, the earth began to be populated at a very rapid rate. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also mighty men, men of renown. But these giants and mighty men were very wicked, and God saw the wickedness of man, and it repented the Lord that he had made man upon the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping tiling, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, for, Noah was a just man, and walked with God. And God said unto Zoah, The end of all leashes come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and, behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and, a window shalt thou make to the ark. And behold I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee shall I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives, with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female. Of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come into thee, to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him. When the ark was finished, the Lord said unto Noah. Come thou and all thy house into the ark and saw, of every clean beast. Thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female. Here, again, as in the Eden myth, there is a contradiction. We have seen that the Lord told Noah to bring into the ark of every living thing, of all flesh, two of every sort and now that the ark is finished, we are told that he said to him, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens and, of fowls also of the air by sevens. This is owing to the story having been written by two different writers, the Jehovistic, and the Elohistic, one of which took from, and added to the narrative of the other. The account goes on to say, that. Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, into the ark and saw, of dean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth, there went in two and two, unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. We see, then, that Noah took into the ark of all kinds of beasts, of fowls, and of everything that creepeth, two of every sort, and that this was as God had commanded Noah this clearly shows that the writer of these words knew nothing of the command to take in clean beasts, and fowls of the air, by sevens. We are further assured, that, Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. After Noah and his family, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, the fowls of the air, and every creeping thing, had entered the ark, the Lord shut them in. Then you were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the hills, that were under the whole heaven, were covered. Fifteen cubits upwards did the ratters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark and saw the object of the flood was now accomplished, all flesh died that moved upon the earth. The Lord, therefore, made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains of the deep, and the windows of heaven, were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And tin waters decreased continually and it came to pass in the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark, which he had made. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro, until the waters were dried up from off the earth. He also sent forth a dove. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, 
and she returned unto him into the ark. At the end of seven days he again sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf, plucked off. At the end of another seven days, he again sent forth the dove, which returned not again to him any more. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. Then Noah and his wife, and his sons, and his sons' wives, and every living thing that was in the ark, went forth out of the ark and saw and Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. And offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. We shall now see that there is scarcely any considerable race of men among whom there does not exist, in some form, the tradition of a great deluge, which destroyed all the human race, except their own progenitors. The first of these which we shall notice, and the one with which the Hebrew agrees most closely, having been copied from it, one is the Chaldean, as given by Barossus, the Chaldean historian. Two, it is as follows, after the death of Ardates, the ninth king of the Chaldeans, his sons Jethrus reigned eighteen Sari. In his time happened a great deluge, the history of which is thus described, the deity Cronus appeared to him, Zjithrus, in a vision, and warned him that upon the fifteenth day of the month Decius, there would be a flood, by which mankind would be destroyed. He therefore enjoined him to write a history of the beginning, procedure, and conclusion of all things, and to bury it in the city of the sun at Sipora, and to build a vessel, and take with him into it his friends and relations, and to convey on board everything necessary to sustain life, together with all the different animals, both birds and quadrupeds, and trust himself fearlessly to the deep. Having asked the deity whither he was to sail, he was answered, to the gods, upon which he offered up a prayer for the good of mankind. He then obeyed the divine admonition, and built a vessel five stadia in length, and two in breadth. Into this he put everything which he had prepared, and last of all conveyed into it his wife, his children, and his friends. After the flood had been upon the earth, and was in time abated, Zjithras sent out birds from the vessel, which not finding any food, nor any place whereupon they might rest their feet, returned to him again. After an interval of some days, he sent them forth the second time, and they now returned with their feet tinged with mud. He made a trial a third time with these birds, but they returned to him no more, from whence he judged that the surface of the earth had appeared above the waters. He therefore made an opening in the vessel, and upon looking out found that it was stranded upon the side of some mountain, upon which he immediately quitted it with his wife, his daughter, and the pilot. Zjithras then paid his adoration to the earth, and, having constructed an altar, offered sacrifices to the gods. This account, given by Barossus, which agrees in almost every particular with that found in Genesis, and with that found by George Smith of the British Museum on terracotta tablets in Assyria, is nevertheless different in some respects. But, says Mr. Smith, when we consider the difference between the two countries of Palestine and Babylonia, these variations do not appear greater than we should expect. It was only natural that, in relating the same stories, each nation should color them in accordance with its own ideas, and stress would naturally in each case be laid upon points with which they were familiar. Thus we should expect beforehand that there would be differences in the narrative such as we actually find, and we may also notice that the cuneiform account does not always coincide even with the account of the same evots given by the Rossus from Chaldean sources. The most important points are the same however, I. E. In both cases the virtuous man is informed by the Lord that a hood is about to take place, which would destroy mankind. In both cases they are commanded to build a vessel or ark, to enter it with their families, and to take in beasts, birds, and everything that creepeth, also to provide themselves with food. Iti lotly cases they send out a bird from the ark three times, the third time it failed to return. In both cases they land on a mountain, and upon leaving the ark they offer up a sacrifice to the gods. Zjithrus was the tenth king, and Noah the tenth patriarch. Zjithrus had three sons, Zerovanos, Titan and Japtosthes, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japhet. As Cory remarks in his ancient fragments, 
The history of the flood, as given by Barossus, so remarkably corresponds with the biblical account of the Noachian deluge, that no one can doubt that both proceeded from one source, they are evidently transcriptions, except the names, from some ancient document. This legend became known to the Jews from Chaldean sources, it was not known in the country, Egypt, out of which they evidently came. Egyptian history, it is said, had gone on uninterrupted for 10,000 years before the time assigned for the birth of Jesus. And it is known as absolute fact that the land of Egypt was never visited by other than its annual beneficent overflow of the river Kill. The Egyptian Bible, which is by far the most ancient of all holy books knew nothing of the deluge. The prayer, or Neo Olide, Kufa Cheops was building his pyramid, according to Egyptian chronicle, when the whole world was under the waters of a universal deluge, according to the Hebrew chronicle. A number of other nations of antiquity are found destitute of any story of a flood, which they certainly would have had if a universal deluge had ever happened. Whether this legend is of high antiquity in India has even been doubted by distinguished scholars. The Hindu legend of the deluge is as follows, many ages after the creation of the world, Brahma resolved to destroy it with a deluge, on account of the wickedness of the people. There lived at that time a pious man named Satuakrita, and as the Lord of the universe loved this pious man, and wished to preserve him from the sea of destruction which was to appear on account of the depravity of the age, he appeared before him in the form of Vishnu, the preserver, and said, in seven days from the present time. The worlds will be plunged in an ocean of death, but in the midst of the destroying waves, a large vessel, sent by me for thy use, shall stand before thee. Then shalt thou take all medicinal herbs, all the variety of feeds, and, accompanied by seven saints, encircled by pairs of all brute animals, thou shalt enter the spacious ark, and continue in it, secure from the flood, on one immense ocean without light, except the radiance of thy holy companions. When the ship shall be agitated by an impetuous wind, thou shalt fasten it with a large sea serpent on my horn, for I will be near thee, in the form of a fish, drawing the vessel, with thee and thy attendants. I will remain on the ocean, O chief of men, until the night of Brahma shall be completely ended. Thou shalt then know my true greatness, rightly named the Supreme Godhead, by my favour, all thy questions shall be answered, and thy mind abundantly instructed. Being thus directed, Satyavrata humbly waited for the time which the ruler of our senses had appointed. It was not long, however, before the sea, overwhelming its shores, began to deluge the whole earth, and it was soon perceived to be augmented by showers from immense clouds. He, still meditating on the commands of the Lord, saw a vessel advancing, and entered it with the saints, after having carried into effect the instructions which had been given him. Vishnu then appeared before them, in the form of a fish, as I had said, and Satyavrata fastened you cable to his horn. The deluge in time abated, and Satyavrata, instructed in all divine and human knowledge, was appointed, by the favour of Vishnu, the seventh menu. After coming forth from the ark he offers up a sacrifice to Brahma. The ancient temples of Hindistan contain representations of Vishnu sustaining the earth while overwhelmed by the waters of the deluge. A rainbow is seen on the surface of the subsiding waters. The Chinese believe the earth to have been at one time covered with water, which they described as flowing abundantly and then subsiding. This great flood divided the higher from the lower age of man. It happened during the reign of Yen. This inundation, which is termed Hung Shui, great water, almost ruined the country, and is spoken of by Chinese writers with sentiments of horror. The Shu King, one of their sacred books, describes the waters as reaching to the tops of some of the mountains, covering the hills, and expanding as wide as the vault of heaven. The Parsaks say that by the temptation of the evil spirit men became wicked, and God destroyed them with a deluge, except a few, from whom the world was peopled anew. In the Zend Avesta, the oldest sacred book of the Persians, of whom the Parsis are direct descendants, there are sixteen countries spoken of as having been given by Ormuzd, the good deity, for the Aryans to live in, and these countries are described as a land of delight, which was turned by Araman, the evil deity, into a land of death and cold, partly, it is said, by a great flood, which is described as being like Noah's flood recorded in the book of Genesis. The ancient Greeks had records of a flood which destroyed nearly the whole human race. The story is as follows. From his throne in the high Olympus, 
Zeus looked down on the children of men, and saw that everywhere they followed only their lusts, and cared nothing for risht or for law. And ever, as their hearts waxed grosser in their wickedness, they devised for themselves new rites to appease the anger of the gods, till the whole earth was filled with blood. Far away in the hidden glens of the Arcadian hills the Sioux of Lycaon feasted and spake proud words against the majesty of Zeus, and Zeus himself came down from his throne to see their way and their doings. Then Zeus returned to his home on Olympos, and he gave the word that a flood of waters should be let loose upon the earth, that the sons of men might die for their great wickedness. So the west wind rose in its might, and the dark rain clouds veiled the whole heaven, for the winds of the north which drive away the mists and vapors were shut up in their prison house. On hill and valley burst the merciless rain, and the rivers, loosened from their courses, rushed over the whole plains and up the mountain side. From his home on the highlands of Thyre, Deucalion looked forth on the angry sky, and, when he saw the waters swelling in the valleys beneath, he called Pierlui, his wife, and said to her, The time has conic of which my father, the wise Prometheus, forewarned me. Make ready, therefore, the ark which have built, and place in it all that we may need for food while the flood of waters is out upon the earth. Dot. Then Pierha hastened to make all things ready and they waited till the waters rose up to the highlands of Thyre and floated away the Ark of Ductilier. The fishes swam amidst the old elm groves, and twined amongst the gnarled boughs on the oaks, while on the face of the waters were tossed the bodies of men, and Deucalion looked on the dead faces of stalwart warriors, of maidens, and of babes, as they rose and fell upon the heavy waves. When the flood began to abate, the Ark rested on Mount Parnassus, and Deucalion, with his wife Pierha, stepped forth upon the desolate earth. They then immediately constructed an altar, and offered up thanks to Zeus, the mighty being who sent the flood and saved them from its waters. According to Ovid, a Grecian writer born 43 b. a. Deucalion. Does not venture out of the ark until a dove which he sent out re. turns to him with an olive branch.